Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise and joy, Hallelujah. Now, we have a lot to cover this morning, so let's jump right into our text, Hebrews chapter 1 and the first three verses, which says again, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, he has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholdeth all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now this morning we want to focus on the fact that Jesus is the heir of all things. That's what it says in verse 2. He has spoken unto us, the Father has spoken unto us in these last days by his Son, Jesus, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Now, in order to understand this passage, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, which tells us in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And so at that moment, all things belong to God. But sometime between there and the creation of man, Lucifer, one of the higher angels in the heavens, rebelled against God. And we see that in Isaiah chapter 14, beginning at verse 12. It says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? You see, he has been cut down to the ground. He has been cast out of heaven and sent to the earth. And the reason for this is seen in verse 13. You have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Almighty. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And so we see here that Satan was to overthrow God. Now this is also told to us in Ezekiel Chapter 28, beginning at verse 12, he says, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now we know the king of Tyrus wasn't in Eden. So there's a hidden message here speaking about Lucifer, the fallen one. It says, every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. And so Lucifer was created. He is not a God, capital G. He is a God, little g, because there are those that worship him. It says in verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in all thy ways from the day thou wast created until iniquity was found in thee. And this is speaking of the rebellion that we just read about in Isaiah chapter 14. Job chapter 1 verse 6 says there was a day when the sons of God or the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them and the Lord said unto Satan whence do you come and Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it so Satan has been cast from heaven his domain is the earth as a little g God and he's roaming the earth seeking someone to devour. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 says, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God, little g, of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. This is speaking of Lucifer. Job 9, 24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Well, if the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, who is the father of the wicked? 
Lucifer, Satan. Matthew chapter 4, as we read about the temptations that Satan placed before the Lord Jesus. And in verse 8, it says, Again, the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world or of the earth and the glory of them. And Satan said unto Jesus, All these things will I give thee if you will fall down and worship me. You can't give something that doesn't belong to you. So we see through these passages that Satan, Lucifer, the fallen angel, is the god of this world for a time period because of the rebellion that he cast unto the Father and he passed on to mankind. And so this world now belongs to him. That's why we're told in James chapter 4, verse 4, he who is a friend of this world is an enemy of God. We're told in the book of Hebrews that we are strangers simply passing through. We're pilgrims. Why? Because this world, as it stands right now, belongs to Lucifer. But in our text, we read that Jesus is the heir of all things. Psalms chapter 2, verse 7 and 8 says, I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You see, it all began belonging to God. Jesus said Satan comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And so he has stolen the earth, and Jesus is coming to take it back. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says, For by Jesus all things were created, things that are in heaven, things that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him, and for him. And so Jesus is the rightful owner of the earth. And being heir of all things, there will come a day where he rightfully takes back possession of the earth. That's why Peter tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth, restored back to the way God originally intended it, and Christ will reign and rule upon that earth. Now, this is exactly what we see taking place in Revelation chapter 5. It says, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. It was Roman custom to place a seal upon an important document. And every time that you would roll the document one way over, you would seal it. You'd roll it again, seal it, roll it again, seal it until ultimately it's been fully rolled up and it has seven seals upon it. And so we see this picture in heaven. There is a document with seven seals upon it. In verse two, it says, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And so I, John, I wept, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And of course, this is speaking of Jesus who triumphed triumphantly over the works of darkness over the forces of Satan by the victory that he accomplished upon the cross. And it says in verse six, I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And so this is Jesus, the lamb of God, as he had been slain. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, which would be the father. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials and full of odors, which are prayers of saints. And they sang a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us or purchased us back to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. And notice this, 
Thou hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Why? Because Jesus has taken possession of what rightfully belongs to him. He is the heir of all things. Now, the next chapters are going to speak of each seal being opened. And this would be the time of tribulation, great tribulation upon the earth. But in chapter 11, verse 15, it says, The seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. This is the moment, friend, when the kingdom of the earth is taken back by he who it rightfully belongs to, the Lord Jesus. And we are told in Romans chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the brother of Jesus. We are in the family. And if children, if in the family, we are heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. And so when we read in Hebrews that the Father has appointed Jesus heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, we can take great delight in knowing that there's coming a day where Jesus is going to take back the earth. Jesus will reign upon the earth from the city of Jerusalem, sitting upon the throne of David in the new temple. And we, hallelujah, shall reign together with him, appointed as priests and kings throughout the earth, forever serving with him. And this is what Paul means when he says faith is the evidence of things hoped for. As his people, this is the day that we are hoping for. This is the day that we are looking forward to, where Jesus will reign. Sin will be expelled from the earth. Satan will be locked away for a time, and all men everywhere will bow in humble adoration to Jesus the Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, and live every day in faithful service unto him. But friends, we don't have to wait till that day. We have the joy, the pleasure, and the privilege to live unto him each and every day, to live faithfully in his service crucifying our flesh, loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving and placing our neighbors before ourselves. There's no greater calling that a man can have upon this earth than to be in the service of the Lord Jesus. And I pray that you are taking every opportunity of every day to do just that, to become a better image of his person, and to be a light unto this world that so desperately needs that illumination. Well, I truly love you, friends. Once again, I am so thankful that you are here, sitting at the feet of Jesus and being taught by his spirit the great and wonderful truths that lie hidden within his word. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.